obviously Saturday's a big day for us. Sometimes you get those days where they come out like thinking about Saturday instead of today. And I thought they did a great job leadership wise. This guy's starting to step up and set the example for how you have to practice, how you have to respond in all different situations. Because um, it was a little more competitive situations today. Um, it wasn't like this was going to be a day, hey, let's get prepared for Saturday. This is a day we got to continue to push and, you know, give ourselves opportunities to grow and offensively, defensively, and special teams as well. So um, challenge was met by those guys, and I thought they did a great job. And I thought for not the first time, but I think a, a bigger opportunity here for some of our leadership to step up and show it. What are you kind of expecting on Saturday? What are you hoping for on Saturday? Uh, really competitive stuff, you know. Um, I think more than anything is just see guys play and perform. You know, see if we can kind of get that mentality to let it fly and not worry about mistakes, you know, because in practice, you know, you're getting coached, coaches there. A lot of those situations where, you know, if you make a mistake and they're, they're correcting you. And so now you're going to get the first time we were actually on the sidelines. Guys got to go out and play. Hopefully there's, you know, there's a little bit of an environment um, to see how these guys, because look, we don't know, you know, I mean, we very few of us have actually seen some of these guys. I was fortunate enough to be there, see their eyes in a bowl game. But I think it's a big deal to just kind of let them fly and, and see who kind of has that opportunity that, that sometimes their levels change and things go up and then you see guys that you know are young and and maybe you know a little bit hesitant in some of those situations so I think more than anything it's about hey who, who kind of lets it fly who doesn't you know play a little bit more passive and think too much so kind of a, lot, a lot of times coaches will say you know if you go one against one or good against good you're going to see plays on both sides of the ball and your defense made some plays today but do you also reinforce your quarterbacks the need to protect the ball, particularly in the red zone after the Oh, game. There, there's no doubt. There, there's, there's a lot of things that we're going to be able to kind of hammer upon on this. Um, you'll see, you won't, hopefully you won't see it in, in Saturday on, on what the points differentiate when, when you do a turnover inside the red zone because it's astronomical. Um, but it's not just the points. It's, it's an incredible momentum shift. It's an incredible shift for one side that's unbelievable and for the other it's so de deflating. So. I think those are the things that we want to continue. That's why we had to have competitive situations because <clears throat> we got to <clears throat> put them in that and see how they handle and see how they respond. And um, I think today we'll, there's a lot of those things we'll get to evaluate. What kind of structure are you playing for on Saturday? Like, how's it going to look? <laughs> There'll be 11 guys on the defensive side of the ball. There'll be 11 <laughs> guys on the offensive side of the ball. It, it, it's it's kind of it, it's they'll start at a minus 25, and basically every series will be at least six plays um, unless there's a turnover. But it's all based on if you, you know, if you get a first down the first three plays, then your drive, no matter what, continues. You know, if you get a, if you get a first down the first three plays, then your next drive will begin wherever that drive ends. If you don't get a first down those first three plays, then your, your, your next drive will begin 10 yards back from wherever you ended the, that, that next drive. Um, so it really puts an emphasis on, on obviously, first, you know, those first three plays. And then, obviously, if you get a, a big play, a plus 15 on a run or plus 20 on a pass, then obviously the drive continues no matter what happened in the, in the first set. So there's, there's some situational stuff where offensively, deep, they, they won't be thinking about it. You know, it's not like the guy's going to call it based on, oh my goodness, we didn't get a first down. Now we've got to have a 20 plus play to, to drive. But I think it sets the understanding defensively even what the drives continue if you give up big plays. And then offensively, you recognize it's really tough to do this methodical thing all the way down the field if you can't create some big plays. So I think all those things being said, it's they won't understand all that. They'll just know the ball's going down. It's going to be a really competitive situation with a unique little scoring just to you know, make it interesting. Luke, when you guys bring in recruits for business, what do you hope to show about the program? What do you like, hope to get out of it? Like to me, we want to highlight our, our players, our kids, our, our culture, our environment. That's And that's what's hard in the spring because they don't get to spend as much time here. You know. Um, if they are here for a day, you know, it's, it's they get to see a little bit of practice to meet with a couple of guys and the coaches. Uh, I think more than anything, I want our players to take ownership in this program. So when guys come on campus, these are the people that might represent them when they walk away. And so we want them to take pride in that. We want them to, you know, obviously you know, be around these guys, but have a great influence on them positively, you know, but also to give us some feedback because a lot of times they'll know a little bit more about these guys the time they spend with them. So I think it's it's all encompassing. I think that we can draw them in and, and the relationship with a coach, but what's going to keep them here and, and make them successful at doing what they do is that environment that's within that locker room. I'm guessing you guys have a pretty good idea what you have in Braylon Allen and Chez, but for the third spot, you've been looking at a lot of different guys. Does 44 have a chance? <laughs> I mean, I know he's Gator. long call and he calls him Riggins. John Riggins. I'm not sure a lot of these guys know who John Riggins they do. is. They don't. I know. But does he have 
I know he's just a walk on and he's young, but no, he there, there's going to be roles for everybody. Okay. And I think that the unique thing is, is um, maybe a role is a short yards, maybe a role is some other situational stuff. But you know, when these guys are out here and they have the opportunity to show, you know, improve some things, I think it gives them a lot greater opportunities as we go into the fall. Because now is a lot about learning, a lot about developing, a lot about you know fundamentals and things like that. Fall becomes about preparing to win football games, and. You know, so those guys are proving some things right here, him in particular, to, you know, as we get into the fall, say, okay, hey, there's a role here for, for guys like this. Um, you know, because there might not be nearly as many opportunities in the fall, but we already have seen what it is that we need to see. We've heard about the ISO cam the last few weeks, something that you brought from the Cincinnati days. Just where did that start for you, and what are some of the things that you look for? Everybody has a different vision of what effort really looks like, you know, and, and until you actually see some things. And, you know, the greatest effort guy in the world, there's still somebody out there that goes a little bit more. And, there's nothing like actually seeing, right? Don't tell me, show me. And, and so when you have an opportunity to kind of focus in and see it, you can see some different things. You can see a strain level, you can see an intensity level. And I think it's, you know, amongst your peers, I think it's a really, you know, you know powerful thing. Um, no matter what in your mind, how hard you think you go, all of a sudden you watch it and you recognize some things that you can do better. So I think it's twofold. I think it helps me and us understand what, you know, effort intensity looks like, but it really helps those guys kind of recognize the things that you know, we want to see it. it doesn't just happen on Saturdays. Do you do live tackling on Saturday? So we'll go live on Saturday. I think uh, the first half will be live for everybody. The second half, the, the ones will not go live. We'll just thud up the second half with the ones. Otherwise, the twos and threes will, will be live. So, and it's not just who's the ones and who's the twos, but you know, there are some situational stuff where, okay, we don't need to see a ton of shots at Braylon and Chez and those guys. So, you know, do, do we need to see them carry the ball 15, 10 times? No, we, I don't think we do. You know, but I think, you know, you get a few in there, we, we can do that. And then the second half for some of those guys, you know, there's not a necessary for us maybe to continue to have those live situations. But, I mean, as you see, it, it can be as physical and tackles hold to the ground just by nature of the competitive spirit. With the place kicking duties, you know, you know we saw Nate and some Daniel working there. Any clear indications on this uh, like, oh, with the competition? The, the great indication is there's some competition, as you saw those guys step out there and, you know, some clutch situations where the whole team's watching and, and kind of, you know, nail it. And uh, I think more, the more we can put those guys in those situations, again, to see how they will handle it and react and respond, um, does nothing but give us a better opportunity. You know, we create that competition. If, it's, if there's no competition, it's harder to get better. So I think more than anything right now, we're seeing some competition, not just at uh, those other spots, but in the kicker spot as well. Uh, Jason, obviously, he brought some experience from Boston. Jason. Jason Major. Okay, uh, Major. What, uh, you know, he's brought some experience with him, but what have you seen from him this spring that you, that you like? He's a competitor. I think, you know, when you look at the culture of the program, what we want to be, competitive spirit is a big part of it. And uh, people other people all compete in different ways. I mean, just because they talk and they have energy, like, that doesn't mean they're the only ones that compete. But he does bring a little something different with a fire and a competitive spirit that's pretty obvious out here. And, uh, you know, so I think more than anything, it gives us some depth. It gives us an opportunity to put some more guys, you know, maybe some of those athletic guys more on the field um, based on what, what it is that we're getting. But more than anything, I think hopefully he has shown a little bit of that fire and that competitive spirit that, you know, that we really love to see and, and can become contagious, whether he's a new guy or not. You know, those new guys have to embrace a lot of things about this place. And I think more, more so they've done a great job of that as well as be themselves when they walk on this field too. Look, how do you try to balance, given the guys that are here already, the full eval that you want to, and then looking at the transfer portal just with the calendar that's set up right now where the guys are able to come in right now? Well, I think we, we know that there's some certain areas where we just you know want to want to create some more competition and, and maybe be a little bit thinner. And um, you know, it doesn't mean you're guaranteed to be able to find some of those things. It's still, if you're going to bring a guy in, it's still about the right fit. It's not just about the player. Like There's a lot of great players out there, but you put them in a place where it's not a great fit for them, and you can you can really hurt yourself more than you help yourself. So, so I think there's a balance there. Um, you know, those are things that we'll peek at and look at, and we're always kind of trying to find ways that, to find the right ones that can provide something more for us and our team. Um, but nothing that we believe wouldn't fit personality-wise and, and culturally-wise before anything else. Luke, it seems like Jonas DeClona, Jace Arnold have been getting a good amount of reps with the twos. What have you seen from those two in their development? They're young. They're competitive. They, they, you know, they bring some some athleticism and some speed. That I think that, uh, you know, is is pretty obvious. And uh, you know, th that's what this is about. Those guys come to school here early to get these opportunities. And 
I think the more we can get them out there, the, the faster that they have an opportunity to grow. And not that the older guys don't need the opportunities, but obviously there's some guys like uh, that have been here for four years and be, is their fifth spring ball. I mean, how much time do they do they really, really need? I mean, there's time, but I think more than anything, we're trying to find ways, those guys that come in early, to get them out there on the field, give them an opportunity to just play and let their natural talents, you know, kind of show. You guys have mentioned about the right fit often, and which is obviously like it's important, but I'm just, just curious what, what the right fit is and what you describe as the right fit. Is. It, it's, it's not any one thing. The right fit is the guys that will buy in and believe into the culture. They understand that there's a sacrifice, you know, that there's, there's a commitment level. If you're just coming here to rent and you're just coming here to think that's going to give you an opportunity to make it to the next level, I don't think you'll be successful because if you don't embrace all the things that we think are important, you know, from the team side of things, how we do things and how we sacrifice for one another, and it's really difficult to, to have success. You know, I've had those guys come in before that we made a mistake on that just think they're, well, I'm just here to play ball. And if you're just here to play ball, what we ask you to do and hopefully the way that which we ask you to do it and the intensity we ask you to do it with, you can't do it by yourself. And so you're really trying to figure out and, you know, are these guys going to embrace all the things that we want the program to be about, you know, what the history of want the history to be about. Most importantly, we don't want guys that want to be renters, you know, and that's hard to say when you got a guy, well, I'm only going to be here for nine months. I can tell you this, that, you know, as Tanner's been here for a short amount of time, a lot of these guys, like, I don't feel like we got a lot of runners. I feel like we got guys who are taking pride in what it is that they've done here in the past and what we can do in the future.